Battle of Goyche, Azerbaijani, Goyke Doyusu, Russian, Geokeske Boj, Turkish, Goyke, Goyke Savasi, or Raid on Goyche, Azerbaijani, Goyke Baskini, Turkish, Goyke, Goyke Baskini, were series of clashes that took place from the 27th of June to the 1st of July 1918 between Ottoman Azerbaijani coalition forces led by Nuri Pasha and coalition of the Soviet 11th Army and Armenian Dashnak forces. The initial battle ended on 30 June, but minor clashes continued until 1 July. Being outnumbered 6 to 1, the Central Powers were able to defeat Armenian Soviet forces before reaching Ganja, then headquarters of the Ottoman Islamic Army of the Caucasus. The Ottoman Azerbaijani forces seized control of the lands from Goyche to Shamaki and ended Armenian Soviet rule in the region as a result of the battle. Topic: Background. The Xiaomian-led Baku Commune decided to launch a military operation to prevent the Ottoman army from recovering in Ganja. Commander of the Military and Maritime Affairs Committee of the Baku People's Commissariat Grigory Korganov signed an order on 4 June and asked the Red Army to take action. He gave instructions to the Armenian Bolshevik Russian forces to capture the plain flat up to Yevlak and seize the Yevlak Bridge. On 6 June Armenian and Russian Bolshevik troops set off from Baku to Kazi Magomed modern-day Hijigabal. They pillaged Kazi Magomed and burned down the surrounding villages. The Red Army forces, which began to gather at Kazi Magomed station, set off on the 10th of June to go to Ganja, then capital of Azerbaijan Democratic Republic. There was a small military unit consisting of Georgians and Azerbaijanis against of the Red Army. Georgian-born Levin Mikhailov was the commander of this group. The coalition force seized the Syir station on 10 June. During this time, Xiaomian learned that the Ottoman military forces had not yet reached Ganja. Armenian residents of Ganja were clashing with the Ottoman Azerbaijani troops. He wanted to take advantage of this situation, which was in favor of the Baku commissioner. The seizure of the Syir station was highly encouraging to Xiaomian. On a telegram he sent to Vladimir Lenin, he wrote, The frontal forces of the military occupied the Syir station on the 11th of June. Our intelligence branch is currently under heavy fire in Kara Station. Our military forces are moving forward. <inaudible> Kurdamir The first branch of the Red Army forces led westward along the Baku Hajikabal Railway, leading to the Maya Sayalu station, while the other branch passed through Hajigabal and reached Kurdamir. The Red Army forces in the region gathered here and attacked Kurdamir. The resistance of the militia forces consisting of Azerbaijanis who tried to defend the city did not yield any results. The Red Army took control of the station, alongside the city itself. The occupation of Kurdamir by the Bolshevik Dashnak forces brought great nervousness to the coalition forces in Ganja. This was a serious hindrance to the advance of the Islamic army of the Caucasus to Baku. Topic: <laughs> Shamaki, AGHSU and Ismaili. The third branch of the Red Army also moved from the north of Baku. 
Moving along the Baku Ganja Highway to the northwest, they entered Maraza and Shamaki. The Bolshevik led Armenian forces attacked the village of Bijo, resulting in a bloody battle between the village population and 400 Armenian troops. The battle ended in a decisive Azerbaijani victory. Receiving an unexpected heavy defeat, the Bolsheviks sent a bigger invasion force to the village. Hearing this, village residents were forced to move to AGHSU and then to Goiche. After burning down Bijo, the Armenian Bolshevik forced to advance to the town of AGHSU, then to the villages of Garamarium and Baigir. The 1st and 3rd Divisions of the 11th Army captured Ismaili and its surrounding settlements in the north of Garamarium. On the morning of 16 June, the 11th Army's 3rd Division forces attacked the Azerbaijani, Dagestani and Georgian militants in the region. At the end of a bloody battle, which lasted over seven hours, the coalition forces were forced to retreat to Goiche. The 11th Army started to gain more support from the Armenian and Russian populated villages in the region. Topic: <laughs> Comparison of forces. Soviet historians claimed that the Ottoman army had a numeral advantage over the Bolsheviks, but Mustafa Garuyilmaz notes that in reality, it was the contrary. He wrote that, "...during the beginning of the battle, number of Turkish military forces that have reached Azerbaijan was less than 5,000." While number of Red Army forces had surpassed 30,000 with the arrival of Armenian groups, number of Azerbaijani soldiers who fought in the battle is unknown, but it had to be less than 5,000, as the first military institution, although their possible involvement is unclear. Azerbaijani Special Corps (ASC), led by Ali Aga Shaklinsky, was established on the 26th of June, consisting of less than 5,000 men. Ali Aga Shaklinsky's minor involvement in the battle also indicates that ASC might have fought alongside the Ottoman army. Furthermore, unknown number of volunteers from Agdash, Akstafa, AGHSU, Bada, Ganja, Goiche, Shaki, Yevlak, Zagartala also joined the Ottoman Azerbaijani coalition forces. Shormans and Red Army's forces were not composed of soldiers that originate from Azerbaijan. They were the soldiers that previously had served in the Russian Imperial Army, but defected after the October Revolution. Although most of the Dashnak forces that also fought during the battle were from Western Armenia, a large number of them were from Armenian Democratic Republic and Azerbaijan Democratic Republic. Shalmian, in a telegraph sent to Lenin, said that. Bolshevik Dashnak forces showed great courage in Battle of Goiche, but the commanders leading the army acted extremely cowardly. Additionally, he also noted that anti communist propaganda carried out by the members of the British Secret Intelligence Service had also great impact in the defeat of the army. Russian Cossack detachment in Persia, with around 1,000 men, was led by Lazar Bacherikov. Although aligned with the White Movement, Bacherikov entered into negotiations with the Baku commissars. Trying to save the situation, the Bolsheviks accepted his offer of assistance in the fight against the Ottoman Azerbaijani coalition forces. His detachment arrived in Alat by sea from the port of Bandar-e-Anzali. 
On 7 July his detachment was sent to the Kurdamir front, but suffered heavy casualties. Bacherikov himself was appointed commander of the Bolshevik Dashnak Cossack forces under the overall supervision of the Grigory Korganov. However, Lazar Bacherikov did not fully obey Grigory Petrov's orders, which caused a confusion to arise between the Bolsheviks, Armenians and Cossacks. On 30 July, Bacherikov, abandoned by the Bolshevik and Armenian units that surrounded him, realized the futility of military operations against the Ottoman Azerbaijani troops, and fled to Dagestan with his detachment, thereby exposing the northern section of the front. I refused the command of the army of deserters and cowards. He wrote to his brother, Georgi Bacherikov. In total, over the period of the fighting, according to Bacherikov himself, his unit lost more than 100 soldiers. <laughs> First assault Topic: Vesali and Garamarium. The headquarters of the Islamic Army of the Caucasus was located in Ganja, then Elizabethpol. The members of the army in Ganja came to the conclusion that there was no physical barrier between them and the railway, and that this situation would pose a great threat to the capital. Nuru Pasha calculated that the real threat to Ganja would come from the Red Army forces near Goiche. The clashes occurred in the Goiche region were a turning point for the Red Army's withdrawal from Azerbaijan and the nation's independence. All the soldiers of the 5th Caucasian Infantry Division of the Caucasus Army Group had not reached Ganja yet. The 10th Caucasian Infantry Regiment crossed the Vanadza Dilijan Road and entered Akstafa. They reached Goiche on 15 June. Nazim Bey and his soldiers were sent to Maya Sayalu and Kurdamir fronts. The 10th Caucasian Infantry Regiment, led by Osman Bey, was sent to Garamarium front. After some days of fighting, the Ottoman forces defeated the Armenian troops, resulting in them retreating to Galakar village. Chief of Staff of the Islamic Army of the Caucasus in Maya Sayalu, Nazim Bey, instructed Osman Bey to carry out an intelligence assault on Armenian Soviet forces. According to the order of Osman Bey, the 28th Battalion took action on 17 June against the Armenian Bolshevik forces in the west of Garamarium. Continuing the operation along the road, the 28th Battalion was caught by a Soviet ambush, as they failed to take timely measures. After a bloody fight, the Ottoman forces retreated to Vaisali village. Seeing that the situation became dangerous, Osman Bey moved his 30th and 28th battalions to protect the 28th battalion from both sides. However, these battalions were attacked by Bolshevik forces in an area of extremely steep valleys and hills. The 29th Battalion, which was attacked from both sides, was able to move to Vaisali village after a very bloody fight. During the day, warring sides could not overcome each other in the hot summer weather, and when the darkness fell, they interrupted the clashes and moved to their original positions. This first significant battle of the Ottoman Islamic Army of the Caucasus in the region resulted in failure near Garamarium. Morale of the Bolsheviks, especially the 3rd Division and its leader Hamazasp Servanjtian's morale mood had risen dramatically. 
Thus, they were further strengthened in the occupied Garamarium and seized some important positions to attack Goiche. The Ottoman Azerbaijani coalition army lost around 200 soldiers in the first battle that occurred near Garamarium village. The exact number of wounded was 156. The Armenian Soviet forces were able to capture few cannons and ammunition from the coalition army. Topic: <laughs> Myasilu The commander of the 10th Caucasian Infantry Regiment ordered Osman Bey to distract the Bolsheviks near Garamarium in order to prevent them from attacking Goiche. Osman Bey did not expect additional forces from Ganja to reach the front. The Caucasian army of Islam troops in Myasilu, under the leadership of Nazim Bey, decided to launch an intelligence attack on the Red Army forces without the permission of the commander Nuru Pasha. They had launched this operation to gather enough information about the power and positions of the enemy without using advanced intelligence arms. At the time of the attack, the reserve forces were not even released. At the same time, the double envelopment maneuver used by the Ottoman army in such battles were not applied. <laughs> Second assault After this defeat, Nuru Pasha, commander of the forces consisting of Azerbaijanis Ali Aga Shiklinsky and 5th Caucasus Infantry Division Chief of Staff Rustu Bey, left Ganja and arrived at Myasilu Station on 18 June. There, they met with Chief of Staff of the Islamic Army of the Caucasus Nazim Bey and commanders of the 29th Regiment in Vaisali and discussed the status of war. Then, Nuru Pasha and few other high-ranking generals moved to Goiche, where they met with commander of the 10th Caucasian Infantry Battalion Lieutenant Colonel Osman Bey and again discussed the state of war. According to reports, Bolshevik Red Army forces have burned down more than 50 villages that were on the road between Baku and Garamarium. They massacred many of the Azerbaijanis living in those villages, and the one able to escape sought refuge in Goiche and surrounding settlements. Number of refugees from Shamaki, Ismaili, and surrounding settlements passed 400,000. Red Army forces were able to recruit Armenians and Russians from surrounding villages and gather an army of 30,000 men. The 5th Caucasian Infantry Division attacking the Bolsheviks alone would have been a suicide attempt. Nuru Pasha thought that thousands of Azerbaijanis would join Islamic Army of the Caucasus after its formation, but his expectations were wrong. Few thousand militia forces that joined the army didn't give the help Nuru Pasha wanted. He went to Goiche and expressed his disappointment to the public with a speech in the town center. In his speech, he explained that, "...the Ottoman Empire, sent soldiers to Caucasus from their homeland to liberate their Azerbaijani brothers and other Turks living in the region from enemies' oppression," and the importance of everyone joining the army voluntarily and serving with great spirit." He also said, Many of our soldiers fighting in this fierce warm died of dehydration. Since you're not joining the army, at least you have to help by carrying food and water for these soldiers. Nuru Pasha met and discussed with Azerbaijani intellectuals and elder in the Geokchaski Uyezd. 
He was able to acquire their support, which resulted more people joining the army. Many teenagers and adults from Goiche, Agdash, Yevlak and even Bada arrived to the front line to receive military training. Nuru Pasha had requested Eastern Army Group officers to send two important reports to Istanbul. The first report was sent on 27 June, while the second was sent on 1 July. According to this report, the Bolsheviks were gaining power in Caucasus, and Azerbaijanis could not form a major force for the army. It was concluded that 5th Caucasian Infantry Division could not operate in the region. In the reports, Nuru Pasha stated that the newly formed Caucasian Islamic army cannot achieve success from its activities. We expected that at least 30,000 Turks Azeris in here would join the army. Whereas number of recruits is 37. Under these circumstances, to solve the Baku question, arrival of another division would be appropriate. Muslims Azeris here talk much, but work less. They are carouse and greedy people. We see little to no help and selflessness from them. To ensure the liberation of Azerbaijan and Baku under these circumstances, have become very essential for the Ottoman state to protect its faith among the people. Fifth Division needs urgent support. Otherwise, our situation would not be good at all. The front line between Ottoman Azerbaijani and Red Army forces was in a stalemate. Nuru Pasha was in fear of imminent defeat and knew that the Entente was going to launch more attacks on the Ottomans, which would result in the army not sending additional men to Caucasus. He sent a letter to the commander of the 5th Caucasian Infantry Division Mersel Bey. On the letter, Nuru Pasha stated that the troops will move to the lines on 23–24 June and an assault is expected to launch on 27–28 June. During the preparations, Bolshevik spies transferred crucial information to the Red Army. Bolsheviks launched an assault on 27 June with three battalions. Some of them moved to north and stroke the 10th Caucasian Infantry Regiment from behind. From south, they conducted minor skirmishes as to lower the Ottoman morale. Meanwhile, 25th Infantry Battalion and 2nd Cavalry Regiment requested few days ago arrived and immediately incorporated into the 10th Caucasian Infantry Regiment. Fierce fighting resulted in Ottoman forces successfully defending against the Bolshevik assault. The 10th Caucasian Infantry Regiment initiated a counterattack on the Red Army and pushed them about 3 kilometers, 1.9 miles away from their previous positions. On the 29th of June, the 5th Caucasus Infantry Division was preparing for its first combined operation in Azerbaijan. The initial attack was going to be carried out with the 10th and 13th Caucasian Infantry Regiments, while the 2nd Cavalry Regiment was going to attack the Bolsheviks from their left flank. During this point, the Ottoman water, food and ammunition supplies were scarce, due to weather being extremely hot on noon, both sides could not initiate a full assault. Ottoman water supplies were coming from Goiche. Because of the supply issue both sides were fighting with bayonets. At the end of the day western parts of the Garamarium was fully, while the northeastern part of it was partially controlled by the Ottoman Azerbaijani forces. Western parts of Garamarium was flat. 
Bolsheviks' retreat routes were drastically narrowed, as to their east, AGHSU had high hills. The Bolshevik forces decided to flee Garamarium as fast as possible. On the 30th of June, Red Army launched a surprise attack on the 10th Caucasian Infantry Regiment, but failed to gain any success. During the battle for Garamarium, the Azerbaijani volunteer cavalry forces were led by Habib Bey Salamov. Red Army forces launched a night attack on 5th Caucasus Infantry Division in Goiche from their left flank with the help of local Armenian and Russian villagers. The attack force consisted of about a thousand troops, two cannons, and two machine guns. Bolshevik forces under the leadership of Emirov, an ethnic Armenian launched an attack on Parzavand and Kirdadut villages. The civilian population of Goiche fled to Uja. There was no regular soldier in the city. That night, a new volunteer cavalry division, under the leadership of General Major Ahmed Hamdi Gara Argazadeh arrived to Ganja from Gazak. They immediately marched to the city. Head of General Staff informed the 25th Infantry Battalion about the attack and ordered them to help Goiche. They also called for commander of the Agdash region General Ali Asan Sabas's help. The Azerbaijani cavalry forces under Ahmed Hamdi's leadership tried to stall off the Bolshevik forces, but were fully defeated at 7 a.m. 25th Infantry Battalion and some militia from the Garamarium Front had reached Goiche. Nuru Pasha, seeing that Goiche is in verge of occupation and that there is a threat of encirclement, sent some of the forces serving in Garamarium and Agdash to aid the defendants in Goiche. 9th Caucasian Regiment, which was stationed in Poilu, under the commandership of Semel Kahit Toydemir, and militia from Shaki and Zagartala, led by Yusuf Bey Tahirov were ordered to move to Goiche. Receiving artillery and fire support, 25th Infantry Battalion and local militia successfully encircled the Bolshevik forces. The Bolsheviks suffered mass casualties. The rest of the Bolshevik forces, now defeated, had to flee to Garamarium, although they were attacked by the 13th Caucasian Infantry. Afterwards, these Bolshevik forces were attacked by 5th Caucasian Infantry Division, which resulted in Bolsheviks suffering more casualties. Stationed in Garamarium, Bolshevik forces were received an attack, yet again. This caused them to flee to east, to Baku. <laughs> Aftermath Large numbers of weapons and ammunition were seized from the Red Army. Minor Armenian and Russian uprisings in Agdash, Goiche and Ismaili were suppressed. The coalition forces also seized their weapons. Most of the Ottoman casualties and injured personnel were sent to Ganja. Fallen Turkish soldiers were buried in Kanlar and Goranboy. Enver Pasha was busy with reviewing the battle reports. Germans did not want Ottoman forces to enter Baku, while Enver Pasha was trying to delay them. The following is from an order sent by Enver Pasha to the commanders of the Eastern Army Group on 26 June. As moving to Baku will create a threat of Bolsheviks destroying the oil reserves in Baku, we must avoid doing this at any cost for the sake of general military goodwill and administration. For this reason, I order that the 5th Caucasian Infantry Division cannot attack Baku without my approval. 
Please, do not send additional forces to Nuru Pasha without my approval, and return the additional forces already sent to his command. As previously informed, Nuru Pasha will concentrate his forces and will be limited to stop the Bolshevik advance. The following is from an order sent to Nuru Pasha by his brother Enver Pasha. It is not clever to send you help. Your objective was not to move to Baku. I'm repeating that you have to concentrate your forces and stop the Bolshevik movement to Ganja. Enver Pasha informed the commanders of the Eastern Army Group about him sending the 38th Infantry Division and one Mountain Artillery Battalion to aid Nuru Pasha via Gazak Highway. In a secret order. Enver Pasha was trying to convince the Germans that the Ottoman army would not enter Baku, but he was also secretly ordering Nuru Pasha to capture the oil-rich city as fast as possible. On 2 July Enver Pasha sent a personal letter to Mehmet Isat Bulkat, where he ordered him to not talk about the secret orders with Otto von Feldman while he was in Batum to see the war condition. The following is from an order sent by Enver Pasha to the commanders of the Eastern Army Group. Briefly speaking, I'm requesting you to prioritize the strengthening of Nuru Pasha's and our forces in Ganja with available additional soldiers, weapons and ammunition without wasting more time before the situation worsening with Feldman's arrival, and informing of Nuru Pasha with my personal and secret letters sent to you, and not allowing Germans to know about this immoral style of communication equals equals notes